the time is nigh. Join us, brother, in chaos. Uh, thanks for the offer, man, but, uh, are you really chaos? Of, of course we're chaos. Check out my sweet helmet and skull earrings. Well, Webster's Dictionary defines chaos as a state of utter confusion or the inherent unpredictability in the behavior of a complex natural system. Look, all I'm saying is that a structured military force separated into units of equal size with orders given via chain of command is kind of the opposite of chaos. You shut your mouth. I'm so chaotic, I don't even know what I'm gonna have for lunch today. Now you're talking, listen, if you roll up to battle and your enemy doesn't know if you're about to fight them, play kickball, make deviled eggs, or sell Girl Scout cookies, that's when you've become a true agent of chaos. Recently, the benevolent overlords over at Games Workshop were kind enough to send me over this brand new Slaves to Darkness army box. And as fate would have it, that very same day, my friend Josh arrived at my front doorstep with an unassuming brown box asking if I wanted to test its contents. The box contained the full Too Thin Coats paint set, which was sold through Kickstarter last year, and the sets are now making their way to backers. I'm also assuming it'll be available online and in retailers soon. What makes this paint set unique is... Well, nothing. In fact, that's the reason I didn't back this set on Kickstarter. It didn't make any claims through the marketing or through the Kickstarter itself about what this paint set does that others don't, what it improved on, or where it actually sits in the market. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the paint set is bad or that the Kickstarter performed poorly. Quite the contrary, actually. It raised over $1.2 million. Why? because this paint set carries the name and face of former Games Workshop Golden Boy and premier GW painting video superstar, Duncan Rhodes. So I built up the beautiful new demon prints from the Slaves to Darkness box set with the plan to test out a variety of colors throughout the paint job and to get to the bottom of what Duncan's true motivations are in making his own paint range. And it didn't take me long to discover my first clue. You see, inside each box is this handy dandy paint conversion chart. A nice tool to have, and there's even a note explaining that the purpose is to use the colors in the box to follow along with older tutorials that use Games Workshop or Army Painter paints. But it doesn't take too long to realize that every color in this set is a conversion of a best-selling, most popular Games Workshop paint. In fact, if I were to make my own 54 paint set based on Games Workshop colors, it would be almost this exact set with only two differences. I'd include Mornfang Brown and Scrag Brown. So close, Duncan. So close. And as you can see, these are almost perfect color matches. Three minutes into the video, and I've already cracked the case. Too Thin Coats Paint has its sights set directly at the Citadel Paint Line's customer base. And now that we've determined their motivation, the only thing left to do is figure out how well this paint actually performs. I'm going to start by airbrushing a mixed rusty red all over the model, and then spray a darker brown from below to create some shadows. Don't worry, this is the only time I'll be using an airbrush for this entire paint job, but it's important to see how well the paints thin down and flow out of an airbrush. With a mix of three parts Tamiya airbrush thinner to two parts paint, this stuff sprays like a dream. No speckling, no clogging, and it still keeps a nice vibrant color. And because this paint comes in... <gasps> dropper bottles. It's not only easy for me to mix directly on my palette, but it's also easy for me to just drop it right into my airbrush cup. Oddly enough, one of the bottles in the set didn't have a label, and through process of elimination, I've determined this is Mephiston Red. Oh, sorry, I mean Sanguine Scarlet. Definitely not Mephiston Red. Quick sidetrack from the painting to build a fun base for our new demon prints here. I printed out a bunch of these lovely demon stones from Epic Basing because they have demon in the name, and if I don't use them for this project, then when the hell will I? I do this now before the model is all painted so I can situate him on the base while building to be sure his legs stand flat and there's plenty of cleared space for the big rock that is sculpted under the model's foot. All right, on to some proper painting, and we're going to start with the most important aspect of this model, and that is his beautiful skin. I'm envisioning a very pale, almost albino looking skin tone for him. This is really gonna pop next to the dark, 
heavy colors of all his armor and horns. The downside of this is I'm going to be working up from this deep warm color and I'll have to show some patience as I build up to a cold off-white. The paint actually comes directly out of these bottles fairly thick, which is great. It also can be thinned down with just water to a nice smooth layer consistency without losing any of its opacity. This is important because as I'm layering up these colors, I don't want to jump up too bright too fast. I'm just covering a majority of the skin that wouldn't fall in shadow, and I gently push us away from that dark red color. As I'm building up the highlights, I'm adding in more and more of our Fenrisian blue. I'm sorry, I have no idea what this color is actually called. Gravestone blue. This brightens up our skin color while shifting us into the cold spectrum, as this light gray has a fair bit of blue in it. I will say one thing I'm really appreciating about this range is no matter what color I grab, they all have the same consistency and thickness. There are plenty of paint ranges where the yellows are way more watery or certain colors are much more thick. This way, when everything is consistent, no matter which color I grab, I know how to thin it down and how it's going to act. And as you have probably guessed by now, this is more of a real world application review of the paint. I'm putting them through the paces of how I usually paint models, using techniques that you and I use each time we pick up a brush. If I don't encounter a problem here that might have shown up on a more scientific analysis, then I don't really think that's a problem worth worrying about. Plus, at the end of this experiment, I should have a fully painted demon prints, not just a bunch of plastic card sheets filled with a variety of colored squares. As I go brighter and brighter, I mix in some off-white. I still want to keep a little bit of that almost purplish mix in, but we We've passed entirely into the cool color range now. I'm still working with a fairly thin layer consistency here, about a half step above a heavy glaze. And here's where I'm encountering my first issue with this paint. When I use any light colors that have a lot of white pigment in them, they get grainy pretty quickly and it's actually showing on the surface of the model, especially over large flat areas, you can almost see like a dusting across the model. And this isn't uncommon in paint ranges. Oftentimes the white pigments used are larger in order to keep the paint opaque or semi-opaque. But when I need to thin down a paint, I want to be confident it's not going to compromise all the hard work I've put in. The last step on the skin is to add a little bit of a warm, reflective light from below. This really adds the dimension and depth to our circular shaped muscles. Remember, skin is naturally reflective and would show a bit of bounce light from the environment. Well, hello there. Do you ever tire of being surrounded by the riffraff and peasants of society? Did you know that deep inside of you lies a lord or lady, not some simple laborer or bumpkin? Well, fear not, because today's sponsor, Established Titles, has got you covered. That's right, with Established Titles, you can own one square foot of land in Scotland, which, by historic Scottish customs, officially makes you a lord or lady. You'll receive this fancy proclamation that will declare to all visitors of your home and any online visitors through Zoom meetings that you are in fact a lord or lady. Established Titles will also plant a tree for every plot purchased and works with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. There's not a whole lot more awesome gifts out there for the nerd in your life than the gift of lordship or ladyship accompanying with purchase of land in Scotland. In fact, not only do I have my own lordship for today's sponsorship, but for Christmas last year, my wife got me some as well. So I am now doubly lordly, double Lord John. I own twice as much land than a lot of people in Scotland. Fun fact, did you know that any legal document that allows you to add a prefix, you can now legally add the lordship or ladyship to those documents because you are in fact a lord or lady. Check out the link in the video description below and get your own lordship today and use the code NINJAN for 10% off your plot of land in Scotland in lordship. I want to paint all the horns, hooves, and claws black. And I was a little bit confused because even though this is a fairly small paint range, 
there's two blacks. And upon closer inspection, it totally makes sense because one of the features of this paint line that differs from Games Workshop is that this paint is matte. Not like super, super matte, but it's noticeably less shiny than Games Workshop paint. And I, for one, am all for that which is why we have two blacks. One is a matte finish, which actually comes across as a dark, dark gray because of that finish. And the other one is a pure Abaddon black ripoff. And it's fairly satin, which comes across as being very dark and much darker than this black. So using these two blacks together is actually really fun. I use the satin black just towards the tips and edges of each horn and claw to give the impression that each of these pokey things gets darker as it ages. This set also includes a medium, which is suspiciously similar to Lamian medium. And it works beautifully in painting up these skulls. It allowed me to fade up from a dark red shadow color to a bone color without using dozens of layers of glazing. I don't know about you, but I'll never get sick of painting skulls. They have so many interesting shapes and using them to practice where to position highlights is never a poor use of time. I know that once I started to feel confident in how to paint the volumes and place the highlights on a skull, the ability to paint faces for me immediately got better. The set also includes six different washes. I'm using the black wash all over that armor to darken it down. These washes act more like the recently retired GW washes in that they leave a lot more of a tint behind on the raised surface. Whereas the new GW washes are more about flowing only into the cracks and crevices and not leaving as much of that tint behind. For the metallics, I'm gonna start by trying them with a dry brush so I can keep some of that interesting color in the shadows and give that more pitted, decayed metal look. And while these are color copies of the GW metallic colors, how they perform couldn't be farther apart. These metallics are awesome. They have very fine pigments. They're super smooth to apply and the coverage is great. So if you like the GW metallic colors or you've used them for part of an army, get these instead. They're like those, except they're actually good. I'll mix in a thin brown wash to put over the metallics to blend them into that shadow color and give us a bit more of a grit and cut back on the shine. We'll accentuate that shine later with some spot highlights. I wanted to do some more weathering by adding some verdigris for our coppery color here, but here's an issue that I have with this set. It's fairly limited and they're just isn't that color available. I tried to mix my own, and as is true with many paints that have a very precise mix that often includes some amount of white and black pigment, when they mix, they lose saturation and vibrancy really fast, and they end up leaning more towards gray. The color I came up with is pretty close, so I honestly am not gonna complain, but be aware that you're gonna be pretty heavily limited in creating vibrant mixes of colors in smaller sets like these. And as I add some thinned rust color and finish the edge highlights and all our metallics, I wanna to talk to you about something else that chaps my ass about this paint set. This set is touted as having a color triad system. They even include this fancy little color wheel to show you what that means. These colors aren't in a triad. Having three greens doesn't mean it's a green triad. They took the best selling, most popular GW colors and tried to improve them and sell them at a reasonable price. Let that be enough. Color triads are formulated to work in a harmony together. That's not the case here. Can you use three greens from this set as a shadow, base color, and highlight? Sure, you can literally do that with any three green paints ever. That doesn't make it a triad. I don't understand why they felt like this was a good marketing tool to sell more paint. It Just forget this thing exists. Hey, remember that time when I told you how much I love painting skulls? Well, the opposite of that is how I feel about painting wings. Wings are always huge. They're really dumb. They're really boring. They still somehow have a bunch of details that I just do not care about painting. Yes, you can do wings easily with an airbrush, but you still need to get out the brush for all those fine details like the little ridges and holes and scratches. I just keep the paint thin, pull the paint towards the inside section of each wing, and think about the next fun thing I'll be painting when I finally get done painting these stupid wings. Luckily, I do have something super fun to paint after those dumb wings, and that would be the base. I start by airbrushing the entire thing red, and I'm gonna do a two-stage 
black highlight with a dry brush, just like I did for all the horns and hooves. I really like how this turned out. We're gonna try it on the base. I then do a faint dry brush edge highlight in gray and whammy, we have a charred rock effect in just a couple of minutes. We've now reached the exciting step where I get to pop the model off of the painting handle and position it on the base to see how it, oh God. Okay, nothing broke, we're good. Okay, that was close, but luckily nothing broke. So we're just gonna try this again and see how everything lines up. Motherfucker, why? Why would you make the same mistake 15 seconds apart? Let's pretend I'm not a moron and let's move on to putting on some of this volcanic earth basing paste on there to really tie the model and the base together. And as I work through these final touches to bring this charred base to life, let's discuss my final thoughts on this paint range. There's a lot to like here. It's nice and creamy out of the bottle. It thins down well and has a pleasant matte finish. It tastes pretty good. It goes through the airbrush great. The metallics and washes are solid. It's good, but does it do anything particularly well or different? No, not really. It color matches GW's colors, which is great. So if you already use GW paints and want, in my opinion, a better version of that paint at what I'm guessing will be a cheaper price, then this might be the set for you. The paints with more white pigments in them can be a little bit rough to use when you thin them down as they become grainy, but if you just use them in a regular layer consistency, you probably won't run into this issue too often. I also see on the Two Thin Coats website that they are already in the works for expanding the range. So while the range is pretty limited right now, that's likely to change soon. So while I'm not heartbroken that I have to give this paint set back to my friend and don't get to keep it all for myself, those certain colors of Games Workshop that I really love and use often, when I run out, I'll be buying these instead. Because I don't have to transfer these to dropper bottles myself. Thanks for hanging out today. I'm glad we got to try out these new paints together. And I also am glad I got to paint my first ever Demon Prince. I got to admit, painting up this Demon Prince has really excited me about starting my own Slaves to Darkness army. What do you think? Is that something you'd like to see here on the channel? Or is there a different, much better faction that I should be painting up for my next army project? So yeah, just let me know down in the comments what army you'd like to see me paint next. A massive thank you to my patrons that allow videos like this to be made. If you want to support me and aren't sure how, Patreon is a great way to do that for just a couple of bucks a month. You can hang out with me on Discord and you get a bunch of other fun rewards. Oh, and as a surprise thank you for you making it all the way to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a little hint. In next week's video, I'll be sharing a new product that I've been working on for almost a year. It's going to be a limited edition run. There'll only be a certain amount available. So make sure you check out that week's video. And if you like it, you can order one before they're gone forever. So until I see you back here again next week, make sure you find some time in your day to slay the gray.